Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, seen Wednesdays on the Sports Collectors Daily Facebook page and the Great American Collectibles Facebook page. You can also listen to us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Spotify. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by the National Sports Collectors Convention and Sports Collectors Daily. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now your hosts, Tom Zappala and Boston sports personality, John Mallory. Wow, what was that? <laughs> plant, plant really bug, bugging you there? How was that? I'm looking at this plant, it's dead. It was a little, little anal about the fern, are we? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, is, that, is that even real? Is that even a real plant? Yes, it's real. <laughs> Look like you swiped that from a lobby of a Holiday Inn or something. <laughs> Folks, folks, this is my that's, life. This is my life. Where the hell is he going? Of all oh, things, God. that's what was bugging you? I mean, yes. I mean no. I mean, you got three crooked pictures behind you and a couple yeah. books you should toss there. <laughs> Good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Tom Zappala, uh, my, my good friend and co-host, uh, sports personality, John Murray. We have a great show today. Two good friends, Al Crisofoli and James Fiorentino, Hall of Fame sports artist, love of the game auctions. Hey, boys, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing, Al? How you doing, What's James? Up? Everything good? Yes. It's good, to, good to see you guys. <laughs> James, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. Thanks. Good. All right. Uh, we're going to get right into it. Oh, by the way, uh, we're starting a new segment. Uh, the old... Another Gax moment has gone by the wayside. Uh, I was just I was just starting to like him. <laughs> You're killing me here, brother. No, uh, what we decided to do is uh, after the first commercial break, we're, we're going to be showing little snippets uh, every week, and we're calling it a, gla- a Gax blast from the past. A Gax blast from the past. Little snippets, one minute, uh, 30 second snippets of past shows. Some of them are bloopers. Some of them are just stupid things that either myself, Rico, or JM says. Like a, like like a, a guest, like a guest fixing a plant or something like ex- that. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's bring in James first. Uh, Al's going to be with us. James, Hall of Fame artist, James Fiorentino. James, man, you got a lot going on. He does. A lot going on. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's hopefully what you want to have happen every year. So, uh, you know, 30 years of it, but very excited for this year. And obviously you've been going into 2025, um, you know, so much, uh, you know, I'll do a few shows this year. Um, we were talking before, uh, I'll, you know, be showcasing my work at the national in Cleveland this year. Um, I'll be at the Philly show in December. You know, obviously very excited about, and many people probably don't even know it, but coming out with a baseball book, um, on my baseball art, this beautiful coffee table style book, really highlighting my career, um, doing all the work for the players and things like that. So just a lot of exciting stuff. Um, first of all, Al, and jump in here at any point, any time, any questions. Um, let's talk about the book. Uh, the book, uh, I've kind of been watching the progress of the book and how it's developed. You're writing the book with our good friend here, JM, uh, working with uh, Peter Randall Publishers, and they did all of the books that Ellen and I wrote. And uh, actually, Ellen's kind of helping out in the background, helping out with the uh, layout and design with the publisher. Uh, JM, I'm going to ask you the question. Was it a fun project? I tell you, Zap, it really was. Um, I, I probably It probably was similar to what you did with Rico uh, on the book you did with Rico, looking back on all the Hall of Famers that he uh, played with and against. Uh, we did you know a few hours of interview time. Um, but what was great for me, I had met James a few times at shows, you know, through you and everything and become colleagues, whatever. And, but I just learned so much about, it's not so much his art and his talent and his gift that he has. That's visual. People can see that, you know, it's the stories, uh, behind the players. It's not like he's just painting these guys off of cards or what he sees or his own images and all that. Uh, a lot of these guys he's gotten to know and, uh, the stories behind that. And the other thing I was struck by is, um, you know, this started when he was just a young boy. 
I mean, this talent was there very, very early on. The influence of his family. I don't want to give away too much, but um, it was. It was. It was a lot of fun to do. A lot of fun to learn about a really interesting guy. And I think the thing that tied us both together is just the love of sports and the love of athletes and the love of collecting, which came from this show. So it was a real thrill uh, for me to be a part of it. I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. Hey, James. Um, of all the players that you've done, and you've done a zillion of them. Is there one that sticks out in your mind as, uh, uh, you know, just you had an affinity uh, uh, with or, or you really got along and uh, he was easy to work with? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been so many great guys. I mean, doing the stuff for Cal Ripken, obviously, and the 2131 stuff and all during that time period was amazing. I think even more recently, you know, being lucky enough to paint my favorite player growing up, which is Don Mattingly. Going back to when I did his official artwork, when he left the Yankees and was on the cover of Yankee Magazine, I was only maybe 18. But even this past year, doing the artwork for him for his foundation and, you know, connecting with Don again. I mean, I, I you know see him every other year, but just reconnecting with him, you know, in regards to his foundation. And he is as great off the field as he was on the field. He really is. There are some guys that are like that. He's just an amazing guy. And so, you know, I'm lucky that this guy was, you know, someone I looked up to as a ball player ends up being, you know, also a great person and uh, excited, obviously that he wrote the forward for the book. So it doesn't get any better than that for me, but I mean, I've met, as you guys know, hundreds and hundreds of players and, you know, most of these guys are really good to me and uh, it's, yeah, I'm really blessed and lucky to have that, you know, you know, now, you would, Go ahead, Joe. No, I was just going to say there's a, you know, there's a saying in sports, game respects game. Game knows game. Game recognizes game. One of the things that, you know, in, in doing the interviews with James and talking with him, and James, I'd like you to comment on this, is that uh, I think that those, and we're talking about legends upon legends, Joe DiMaggio, people like that. But I think that talent respects talent. And I found in talking with you that those players, these, these, these people who reach the height of their field, they respected your talent. They saw something, you know, I think that helped the communication process, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was doing something that was so unique even at that time. I mean, like sports art, I'm very excited. It's been it's becoming bigger, obviously. And especially in the last two, three years with everything going on in the hobby, you know, my stuff, like some of the sports artists, um, again, translates out of it, but doing it at like 14 and, and, uh, you know, being around DiMaggio and Yogi and Ted Williams and all these guys at a young age, it was obviously just a great opportunity to be become friendly because I'm a young kid, like you said. So these guys were gravitating towards me and I was playing baseball too. So I would talk to them not only about what I do as an artist, but, you know, being a ball player. And certainly when I was about to play in college, um, it made a lot of sense when we were talking about those kind of things. So it was just really, really good timing. And I think that's, that story has sort of, um, it's still continuing, but to now go back and be like, yeah, I was around this hall of famer and this legend, this person, I, even for me, I think, wow, you know, that's incredible. And now yeah. I associate with my son, my older son, who's 14 going, I, I, I really is remarkable that I was a kid, um, you know, painting for these players. Um, you know, James, congratulations, man. Uh, New York State Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, you, you were inducted along with uh, Donnie uh, and Yogi Berra, correct? Has that, yeah. been, has that happened yet? Have you been inducted? No, that's going to happen in November. Really honored and excited. I'm the first artist to go in into that for my contributions, obviously, to, to painting uh, the players in, in New York, the Mets, the Yankees, my affiliation with Cooperstown and doing artwork for them. And, um, you know, so it's a huge honor. And so, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's Mattingly, Buck Showalter, um, Yogi, uh, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I, I'm excited. Wow. And again, I, I like representing Very the art cool. side of it. Yeah, I got to play some games in New York in college and I like John will know this. And I love always telling people how in high school, you know, I always played baseball double day field for Legion ball in the summer and I got to hit a home run there. So there's always this really cool connection <laughs> that is uh, cool. in New York. So, um, yeah, it's a huge honor. I, I, I again, I like sharing it and, um, being able to let people know what, what art can do for baseball just as much as, 
uh, writing or the players and things like that. Promote Al, the I want I want to bring Al in this zap, zap if I could because you know Al your your website is love of the game and one of the recurring sure. things when I was talking with James is passion and love for what you do. You have it too. It's a different field. Oh, you know what I mean. But can you just talk about that and that's your art. I mean, what you do is your art. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, it's all it's super important to me. It's it's more important to me than the 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 profit. You know, certainly. I, you know, I get to work in a field that that I love where I get to handle historically significant pieces and, and they're either uh, play particularly with baseball, but with players that I grew up watching or grew up learning about, you know, it's a, it's a huge part of my life. And I, and I'm thrilled that I get to be so lucky to do, you know, to do this for a living. So I, I totally hear what James is saying about, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with people or stuff or whatever it is that, that, uh, you know, you're so passionate about. Hey, James, before we let you go, uh, I want to thank you. And I want to thank Al <clears throat> for um, James for donating uh, the two beautiful pieces that you uh, donated for our little smiles, children's charity auction. Uh, they went for significant money. One of them, by the way, James was the miracle on ice that you donated to us. I think you said it was one of two. I I'm not sure, but uh, the person that the 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 place that we held the event, the owner of the uh, restaurant is very close friends with Michael Ruzioni. So the person who bought who bought the piece uh, this weekend is getting the piece signed by Michael Ruzioni, oh, wow. who was who was the captain of uh, the Miracle on Ice team. So that's kind of cool. Al, thank you also to you now. Is for it, doing nothing. Well, no, that's that's not true. It's it's, it's not for doing nothing. You're welcome but, anytime. <laughs> but for doing nothing, which was good. Al, uh, JM, and and uh, 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 James, uh, Al had offered anything left over in the auction. We were going to ship to Al, and Al was going to auction, enter him, put him into one of his auctions. And all of the proceeds, including the buyer's premium, was going to go to uh, Little Smiles. We sold out. Everything sold. So, Al, it's the thought that counts, brother. Well, no, because when we're going to have that auction anyway, and uh, and so out of the proceeds of that auction, we're going to make a donation to Little Smiles. That would be nice. phenomenal. And I'll, I'll let them know. Yeah. All right, James, your website is? Yep, jamesferentino.com. You can check me out there and then all the, the social media stuff and Always looking forward to, to, to meeting new people and sharing all the events that are coming up this year. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, uh, we're going to be doing the show down there again at the National uh, on Friday from one to three. We'll get you up on stage with us. Love to. We love having you with us. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting year. Okay. Take care, buddy. Good to talk to Thanks. you, James. See you Hall guys. Of, Hall of Fame artist James Fiorentino. What how, how come how come you don't call me Hall of Famer? I'm in I'm in the Methuen Athletic Hall of Fame. Wait a second. You're in the Methuen Okay, let's qualify that. I'm just saying. You're in, you're in the Methuen it's a Hall of Fame. I, yeah, this is first of all, there's eight eight people in it, number one. <laughs> eight people. There's a lot two, of and luminaries. Two, Al, there's a lot of luminaries in there. Al, number two, it's the school, there's fourteen students it's, in it's the a, school. It's a city. It's a city hall of fame. It's the, the entire community sports hall of fame. For my is work the, for my work as a journalist. Isn't the former chief of police in that too? <laughs> That's a different hall of fame. That's a different hall he's waiting in right now. <laughs> Steve Bedro right. Steve Bedrosian's in there, Cy Young Award winner. That's right. That's yep. right. Yep. And and, and drum <laughs> All right. Let's get let's get Miss let's get to Mr. Chris Afoli. Al, honestly, man, I went through your, your catalog. Uh-huh. This friggin' auction is a mind blower. I mean, this is this has got to be the biggest auction you've ever had. I, th I, I mean, in terms of number of lots, it is. I, I, you know, we'll see at the end of the thing whether whether or not it is. But it's it's got the potential for it. I mean, I think it's our best auction that we've ever had. There's great stuff in it. I mean, uh, just a few tidbits. How about uh, a, a few teasers? Some of the some of the highlights. Okay. So, uh, so I think the thing that I like the most, which is, which is kind of cool because it's, it's not, uh, something that I ordinarily like is we, we've got a, a collection of glass lantern slides that were taken by a, a photographer, Frank W. Smith, who shot for the Cleveland Plain Dealer and, uh, 
can't remember the name of the other newspaper in Cleveland uh, in the early 1900s. And so uh, these these uh, he went down to spring training in 1914 with the Cleveland Naps and he took a bunch of uh, pictures and he created these glass lantern slides, which includes a, a never before seen photo of Joe Jackson. Um, sliding into it, and this was actually not taken during spring training, it was taken during the season, but he's sliding into home. Beautiful shot. It's on the cover of the, the catalog, but it's also, um, you know, it, it, obviously a thing that we're going to be selling. And one of the things that we're doing with these uh, lantern slides is we've created high quality prints of each slide. So if you really miss, cool, because they're hard to display, you know, and yeah, and so <coughs> we thought, okay. Let's let's do a high quality print that goes with the slides. So everybody wins uh, one of the slides. We'll get the print. So I think that's pretty cool. We also how big are the slides, Al? What, what oh, they're this? they're tiny. You know, they're you know th- three inches maybe. So and they're they're you know they're they're slides. So you right, can't right. really display them. You can't really see what's on them. Right. Um. You know. So the print will be really helpful. Uh, for people who like to collect photography, because here's a here's a way, you know, photography is a huge growth area in the hobby. And, and uh, you know, lantern slides really don't get their due because a lot of times they were created for advertising purposes. Um, but in, in this case, the photographer actually took the photos and they're actually photos. They were developed the same way you would develop a photo onto paper. Um, so so uh, that's kind of a cool grouping of things. We also have... Oh gosh, we have a Ruth bat, uh, which is the first time we've ever had a Ruth bat. We've got a, uh, a Toloteros Josh Gibson, which has a special uh, overprint on it that was uh, a prize redemption overprint. And it may be the only Toloteros Gibson. It's a rare card to begin with, but it may be the only one in existence with this, with this prize stamp on it, which is, uh, which is really cool. Uh, we've got, uh, we've broken up the number four, 1963 top set on the PSA registry. Uh, we're selling the number 15, 1961 top set on the registry. I mean, it just goes on and on and on for us, which is, which is great. Let's get back for a minute to the, uh, to the Ruth bat. Uh, yeah. it's a 1928 gamer. Did I, I can't uh, remember. 1918 to 21. So it's an early bat. Wow. It was, uh, it was on display at the, uh, Babe Ruth birthplace and museum in Baltimore. And uh, and the consigner asked us if we would be interested in selling it, and uh, and we said absolutely not. And uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's uh, and that's a great piece, and and uh, we also have a Ted Williams bat, which uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you know, I mean, when you have a you're holding a Babe Ruth bat in your hands, it's just Nothing, it's, it's magic. You know, it's it's just an amazing thing. You know, his DNA is in that bat. Oh man, it's yeah. it, it's unbelievable, and and it's you know it's a little it's a little short and a little light, um, which he did sometimes. He ordered bats that were you know that, that were um, you know short and light, uh, but in this case, it's still like a club. It's thirty six ounces. It's it's wow. like, you know, light for him. It's but you know you're like, eh. but uh, but it's it's uh, it's pretty neat to have that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. I think probably by the time. Uh, this show airs will be just about live, just about ready to go. Yeah, when Jam. I think of, yeah, when I think of love of the game, both online and when I've seen you at the national uh, and and other shows, the the first one that comes to my mind is variety. You have uh-huh. you have things that I don't see anywhere else uh, in yeah. any other auction. Is that part of what you do? Is that your stock and trade? Do you seek that out? I know to a certain extent you're at the mercy of what comes into you, sure. but it just seems like there's always things, whether it's in person or, or on the website, that you don't see anywhere else. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I, I will take all of the, you know, Sandy Koufax rookie cards that you want to throw at me, but, but uh, the stuff that I really love is the stuff you don't see every day. And we do actively we do actively solicit that kind of stuff. I think we're good at describing it. I think we're good at photographing it and presenting it uh, and, and explaining why it's important and what it is. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of resources for that kind of stuff in the hobby anymore. It used to be, you know, that was what people, that was what everybody wanted, you know, but now it's just like a lot of these auctions have become sort of factories for just moving stuff in and out and and it becomes difficult when you do have something unique. You know, this auction is filled with with uh, 
you know, items that, that you just never see. We've got a 53 Bowman color uh, Dodgers in action proof that, that, you know, is an unreleased card from that set. We've got a number of other super, super rare type cards. And, and you know, if you have something like that, you want to consign it to an auction that's that's going to take the time to, you know, present it properly and explain what it is and why it's important. And uh, and I think we're really good at that. So, yeah, it's a it's a conscious thing. We want to sell memorabilia, good memorabilia, you know, and and, uh, um, you know, I think a lot of auction houses, it's really easy to sell cards. You just pop them in an envelope. And, and uh, you know, I think, it, you know, in our case, you know, we love to sell unique things. So that a lot of times is, is, uh, you know, translates into display items and scorecards and tickets and, and, uh, you know, artwork and all kinds of things like that too. All right. We are chatting with Al Christopher from love of the game auctions. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back a Gax blast from the past. <laughs> Hang in there, we'll be right back. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, mile high. Go to milehighcardcode.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. Let's go! Batter up! Hi everyone, this is Rico Petroselli, JustCollect.com. A leader in the vintage sports card industry is giving free appraisals on your vintage cards. They'll evaluate your collection for free and let you know the value of it at no cost and no obligation. If you're ready to sell, JustCollect.com will offer you industry-leading prices to buy your card collection. To begin your free baseball card appraisal, visit JustCollect.com or call them at 732-828-2261. That's JustCollect.com for your free vintage card appraisals and top buy prices for your cards. Check out JustCollect.com today. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. 
with record-breaking sales from everything from the white border T206 Hannes Wagner for $3.12 million to some great items that support the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Golden Auctions has set the highest standards for the finest in sports cards, autographs, and game-used memorabilia. We're always accepting consignments of high-end premium sports treasures or entire collections. Please register for our next auction and bid now at goldenauctions.com. That's golden with an I. We at Golden Auctions are committed to providing unsurpassed customer service for the discriminating collector. That's exactly why we're the leader in the industry. Visit goldenauctions.com or call 856-767-8550. Remember, Golden Auctions. We don't just break records, we shatter them. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game-used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Okay, it is time for a GAX Blast from the Past, brought to you each week by our good friend Paul Borges and the great folks at PB Collectibles, your neighborhood card shop. Go to PBCollectibles.com to find that special card or piece of memorabilia. What we're going to be doing every week going forward is little snippets of past shows. Um, some of them are going to be outtakes. Some of them are just going to be moronic things that either myself, <laughs> JM, or Rico says. Now, it seems, JM, that the bulk of them are moronic things that Rico has. I, I don't know how that works out, but you're... <laughs> <laughs> just, just happens. Anyways, uh, take, take a peek. Mm-hmm. I Listen, right out of the gate, you have a Kyle Perkins. Forget the baseball stuff for now. You have a yeah. Kyle Perkins guitar. I loved Kyle oh. Perkins growing up. He was just great. <laughs> Who was he? Uh, uh, Kyle Perkins? The guitarist? <laughs> See, the guy that uh, did the... Uh, uh, show on TV, which uh, no, the animal show. Would you help him, Jeff? Please. That is, that is so funny. That's exactly what my wife said when I told her about the collection. <laughs> For, yeah, remember that guy? She's like I have a, I, I said I got a Carl was? Perkins guitar and one of his Grammys. She's like the guy from Wild Kingdom. <laughs> Wild Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, Wild. That's, I'm like, no, that's Marlon Perkins. No, <laughs> I, he might have gotten an Emmy, but I don't think he ever got a Grammy. Why did you yeah, tell Carl Perkins the- wrote Blue Suede Shoes. Blue Suede Shoes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know who wrote it. I didn't know Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> really, really. And the my favorite part of that is you have a car, and Rio goes, "Who is he?" <laughs> like with that, you know, with like that Brooklyn, that like, who is he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with Rico, with Rico, you can't make you can't make this stuff up. That's uh-huh. so funny. You know why? And it, it was pure. Like he didn't. That wasn't a gag. Like he didn't. He oh, really God, thought it was no. Marlon Perkins. Rico, one thing about Rico. Rico is real genuine when yes. when stuff like that comes out of his mouth. That's pretty good. Not a clue. Not that a was clue. that was funny. All right, let's get back to uh, our great. Al, Al Christopoli from the Love of the Game Auctions. Al, we're going to go back into the auction, but I want to get your take on the recent PSA SGC merger. What are your thoughts on that? Wait, what? The- <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> um, you know, I th- I think that um, during the during the pandemic, when the hobby the hobby boom happened, right? And I don't think that probably any business. I, I mean, we all grew. We all yeah. all businesses grew. Um, but I don't think any business capitalized on that the way SGC did. Uh, you know, they went from being sort of a a sleepy little company with eight or ten employees to being. You know, I was just down there in Florida a couple of weeks ago. There's 200 employees there now. <clears throat> Are they and, really? And yeah, I mean, this is a company that has grown by leaps and bounds. Um, you know, I think from PSA's standpoint. Um, you know, it's it's probably a good move for them because, you know, 
PSA has whatever whatever it is. Gem rate says seventy five or seventy eight percent market share. You know, <laughs> SBC has eight or ten, but it's not like you know that's eight or ten people that you can pick up, or eight or ten percent that you can pick up by dropping a coupon in the newspaper. So you know, these are people that are that are loyal customers of SGC for a reason. So it's probably, you know, PSA probably looks at that and says, okay, well, you can grow th- organically, but you can also grow through acquisition. And they they may have felt like picking up that eight or 10% market share was cheaper to do this way. Gives them a presence in the Southeast, which is great. Gives them a, another, st- I mean, it's hard to find graders. You have to train them. It takes forever. Um, you know, it's not like you're, you're teaching somebody how to work the cash register. Right. You know, there's a lot of training that goes in there. And so they just, picked up an experienced grading staff. For us as collectors, it sort of remains to be seen. What is that, you know, what does that do for um for prices? What does it do for quality? What does it do for competition uh that we all depend on for these companies? You know, if you're not competing with somebody, what's your incentive to get better and to improve and to and and to uh, offer new products and services? Uh, to your customer base. So it remains to be seen how that kind of stuff is going to be impacted. Um, But it's nice to see stability, you know, in that part of the hobby because we all depend on it. So, so it's, uh, you know, from that standpoint, it's, it's a good thing. Well, uh, playing the devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of cards that SGC graded for me. Okay. You know, something I, I know the value of a PSA graded card tends sure. to be more than the value of a SGC. So I'm going to, I want to send my cards over to PSA, have them crack them open and re slab them under a PSA name. Is that going to happen? Is, is, is there going to be an influx of that? Number one. And number two is PSA maybe going to take a stand and say, I'm sorry, no more, no more of that. Yeah. I, you know, I think that, the smart play would be, especially now that that you know this deal just happens, right? It's just, right. it's it's going to be, you know, even if PSA's long term plan was to get all of the cards out of SGC holders, which it doesn't seem like that is their plan, right? And I agree with you that. Know, um, you know that process is is going to take a long time, and and uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that have to happen before you can start to even think about that from a business standpoint. Um, and I know that a lot of collectors are already talking in that direction. You know, what's going to happen to the value of my slabs and what's going to happen to, you know, to to all of that. And I and I think everybody needs to just sort of take a step back and realize that there are millions. This is not a this is not an example of global, you know, GAI. There, there are millions of cards in SGC holders out there in the hobby. Global went out of business, you know, and and was on, you know, fell on hard times for a long time before they went out of business. SGC was a thriving company that was acquired by somebody else. It's a completely different circumstance. And, and uh, you know, I think people who own SGC slabs and who are loyal to SGC should be confident that PSA is not going to just devalue that brand that, you know, they bought that brand and they paid big for it. And, and so they're going to want to maintain the value of that brand and they're going to want to maintain all of those loyal customers and any business decision that they make is, is going to keep that in mind right at the forefront. So, you know, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, if your plan is to, to cross cards from SGC to PSA, if that's how you collect, then by all means, keep collecting that way. I would imagine that, uh, you know, maybe somewhere downstream, there will be some some blending of the grading standards. The two companies have different grading standards. And I think right. this is, something, right. you know, this is something that, I mean, it's published. But this is something that, um, that a lot of people uh, don't quite right. grasp. That a PSA seven, the definition of a PSA seven and an SGC seven are slightly different. So right. there can't be a guarantee that one would cross from from one to the other. This was graded under this standards, and this, uh, you know, has this standard. Sure. You know, so I I think everybody needs to, you know, if if that's a, a way that you collect, there's a lot of guys out there that'll 
you know, identify cards that would sell well on the PSA registry. They're low pop commons in an SGC eight holder and they'll take the risk, you know, they'll buy the card and try and get it crossed and, and, uh, you know, and take the win if they do. And if not, they just resell the card or hold it in their collection or whatever. So, I, you know, the, if that's a way that you've collected in the past, go keep collecting that way, you know, but <laughs> you no, know, good point. Yeah. You know, Jam. I don't think there should be any hurry for anybody to say, oh, my God, what's going to happen to the value of my cards? Your cards are your cards. You know? Yeah. You know, I want to bring up another uh, issue, if you will. And, um, you know, Al, you may not know this, but in the voluminous and in-depth show prep that uh, Zap and I do, Zap, will, <laughs> like he'll send me a couple, like he'll send me like a, t- a couple topics. So usually it's something like, like, let's say you're on this, he'll say, uh talk to Al about something. It's like really helpful stuff okay, that he yeah. sends me. Uh, <laughs> but this particular one, we were actually on the same page. We both had in our, our own notes, something about a gambling, online gambling that's going on. Okay. Uh-huh. And I want you to get your view and Zab, you can chime in on this too. Is the, is the influx of online betting affecting, how do you think it's affecting sports and is it affecting your business at all in terms of the hobby? Uh, you know what? I worry about it. I, I don't worry about it f- from the standpoint of my business. Right. And, and, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that um, we're not back in the day of, of, you know, the 1919 White Sox anymore. Like, like players are actually really well paid. Oh yeah. So, yeah. You know, so, so, you know, the incentive to, to throw a game you know, it's not the same as it was in 1919 where somebody can say, hey, I'll give you 10 grand, you know, 10 grand is like lunch money for these, for these guys. And, and so I don't know if I worry about it um, affecting the outcomes of games, although there's countless examples of, of referees getting involved and, and, you know, players, do, you know, shaving points and things like that. I think at the pro level, Um, you know, we're kind of protected from that a little bit, but I think that I worry about it from a fan's perspective where, where, you know, I'm starting to hear things like, you know, guys like betting on crazy stuff that has nothing to do with the outcome of the game. Like, you know, like every possible, all the, all the prop bets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And, 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 uh, you know, I don't get involved in it. Um, you know, but, but, uh, I think it does take away a little bit from your your understanding of the sport, you know. Let me tell you what it, what it's done for me, and I'm guessing you guys were on the other side of this, knowing you guys and the the historians that you are. I've always been dead set against Pete Rose getting into the Hall of Fame because of what he okay. did. It's I'm starting to soften on it because of all this, and I realize yeah. what Pete Rose did is different from you know online online betting. It's perfectly legal with what's happening now. You know, nothing yeah. untoward or anything, but it's just like, you know what? Every sport's in, be- in bed with betting now. It's been a yeah. long time. Um, I'm, it, it's softening me on that stance. What do you guys think? Well, I think, you know, I personally. I'm I guessing you guys you. wanted him in before this because I know I kind of yeah, know. Yeah, I, 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 I always have felt like that because, especially now, I mean, now, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Major League Ball players using them as an example, they can't. That okay, but I am, and now you may disagree with me on this. I, there's no way that Joe Smith, uh, first baseman for whoever, uh, is not going to go to his best friend, John <laughs> Mallory, and say, Hey, JM, do me a favor, I want you to throw 10 grand on us. On it, us, it can happen, yeah, right, right. Throw 10 grand on us. I mean, he's, you know, he's not going to bet directly, but I mean, there's nothing to prevent that. And again, uh, the reason I'm a big Pete Rose advocate is because he never bet on his team. Now, so now, I mean, they're at least allegedly never bet on his team. Now, what's the difference? Everybody could do it. Everybody can do it. That's why I'm saying, yeah, you got to let him in. Al, your thoughts? I tend to, you know, when it comes to the Hall of Fame um, and, and, uh, you know, I draw the parallel between Pete Rose and Joe Jackson, Hal Chase, guys like that, and the steroid guys, you know, because yeah. because we as fans have this idea of um, which players were clean and which were not. Right. And and we really have no clue. 
And, you know, and, and no, uh, that's a good point, you know, and I, I'm of the belief that there are plenty of steroid users in the Hall of Fame already. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, w- what are we doing? Keeping guys like Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, is one of the top four or five guys that ever play baseball, you know, and, and, uh, you know, what are, what are we doing? You know, what is the Hall of Fame if it's not going to recognize the best players in the game? Pete Rose is the all-time hit leader. Barry Bonds is the all-time <laughs> home run leader. Right. Neither of them are in the Hall of Fame. You know, <laughs> with, uh, you know what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, um, you know, when it, comes to, when it comes to actually gambling, I don't know. Tom, I, you know, it, is, is a guy making $15 million a year going to bother putting 10 grand on a game? No, but, but, and you're right. And I 100% agree with you. But what about that uh, middle reliever that's making a million a year? Listen, what about the minor leaguer who has, you know, access to the major league? I mean, I'm just yeah. saying it, it's, it's impossible to police. You can't police yeah, right. this. You know what I mean? You, right. you, you don't right, know. Right. You don't know what's going on. So I'm not saying it's good or bad. I wanted to get your view. And, and as it pertained to Rose, because to me, it's like all bets are off now. No pun intended. Like, put the yeah. dude in. Put the dude in. OK, I, you know, I guess I feel point. like I, I feel like I like the purity of sports and and I like the idea of the purity of sports. I don't know how realistic it is or how Pollyanna <laughs> being about it. But, I know. But, uh, I know. You know, but I like the idea that, you know, hey, we have no pro sports teams in any casino cities. You know, now we do. And, and uh, you know, you can't you can't just like wake up in the morning and jump online and place a whole bunch of bets from anywhere in the country. And now you can't. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, so so, I, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, there's there's a loss of innocence thing in there that I think, you know, Good point. Are, you know. <laughs> sort of part of the narrative that, that maybe, uh, I don't know, it, it's, you know, I like this romantic idea of, of, you know, baseball being just this, this clean or any sport being this just clean thing. That's just about competition and athletic performance and really nothing else. And, and, uh, and that's not what it is. And, you know, so it's, it's sometimes hard for me to square that in my head. Hey, Al, uh, in the first segment, you we t- you you spoke briefly about memorabilia, what memorabilia means to you. And in the last two years for me, I've 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 had a complete about face regarding memorabilia. Uh-huh. I have I have pretty much liquidated every card that I own, with the exception of maybe a handful, uh, and really really enjoy collecting memorabilia. Um, yeah. Is there? Are you seeing an influx in memorabilia collectors? Because you know. I don't know who you may have very well made the comment a couple of years ago about uh, the player's DNA being on the baseball or on a bat or, 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 you know what I mean? And that kind of resonated with me. And I I really did an about face and I'm really enjoying uh, collecting memorabilia. Yeah. Is there, is there an increase in, in people collecting memorabilia or is it pretty much cards and memorabilia cards and memorabilia? I don't want to. I don't want to uh, give away anything to my competitors. So, so no, no. But nobody likes that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, t- I tend to think that um, that the memorabilia piece is a natural extension of cards, and it also exists on its own, right? So, so um, uh, in my case, I'm similar to you, Tom. I sold off most of my cards when I started this company, and and uh, you know, I still have the the ones I collected as a kid. I yeah. Still- childhood collection. I still have some stuff that resonates with me today, but I prefer to be surrounded by my collection and, and not have it, you know, it's just something that I've got kind of evolved into, you know, I've got, you know, you know, pieces all around in the office and at home and, and, uh, um, you know, I, I like that. And I think that other collectors like that too. They have their man cave, their card room, their bar, their basement bar, whatever it is. And they like to, you know, trick it out with, with, uh, you know, stuff from their team or from their era of sports that they like. So we see a lot of that. I think the other thing is that if you're naturally, if you're, you know, our company is naturally selling things that are rare. And, and so a lot of this memorabilia is really, really rare and, and, uh, you know, much more rare than, than a card, you know? So, so people who are attracted to rarity, People who are attracted to beauty, you know, they tend to like, you know, bigger stuff that they can absolutely ground them. So I think that's a piece of the hobby that will always be, you know, plus it's you can't put it in a slab. 
So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sure, so, that's a good point. So, you know, right. there's, there's a lot of value there. And, yeah. and, and, you know, the fact that, you know, this big three dimensional stuff they haven't gotten their hands on yet, you know? <laughs> All right. Listen, so. we're going to take a quick break. Al is in the house for one more segment. Uh, we got some other stuff to talk about. The direction of the hobby. Are you happy with the direction of the hobby? Hang in there. We'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you're a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on their tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport. Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field, and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer, because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned. The highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions, here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately 
become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hey, I'm Mike Petroselli. If your company is looking for the best in marketing and promotional items, you'll hit a home run with Petroselli Marketing. With over 8,000 suppliers and 650,000 imprint-ready items, we can get your company the visibility it needs to get your maximum exposure. Whether it be office promotions, wearables, automotive, sports items, and everything in between, Petroselli Marketing can do it all. Our design staff will even work with you from concept to delivery and customize your products. At Petroselli Marketing Group, we will get your brand in front of your audience. Contact us at info at PetroselliMKT.com or call us at 603-880-3202. That's Petroselli Marketing, where no dream is impossible. So... How does your company or organization do promotions? Imprinted products keep your brand in front of your customers more than any other form of advertising. For the best on-time service and new ideas for your next project, give Petroselli Marketing Group a call at 603-880-3202 or email info at PetroselliMKT.com. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Al, you might want to check the plant. I think it moved uh, like an inch in the last 50 minutes. So you might want to just check that out. I, I just, I was looking up there, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I went away for a week and, I, and nobody watered the plant while I was gone. It looks good. It looks I good. looked in the thing and there's some dead leaves in there and I just uh, wanted to have, you know, I, you know. I don't want the uh, viewing universe to think I'm not taking much, much more important than the beginning of the show. Good work there. <laughs> All right, we are back with Al Christofoli of Love of the Game Auction and Methuen High School Hall of Famer John Mallory. Jam, I think I'm going to introduce you like that from now on. Methuen, Methuen Athletic, Hall. Methuen Athletic Hall of Fame. Let's just do because I didn't go to Methuen uh -huh. High School. I didn't even go to the school, and I'm in the Hall of Fame. That's how good. Wow, I that's am. right, John. You went to St. John's Prep. I did. I did. I went we, to Austin, probably. Yeah, we used to crush you guys regularly. I mean, Killed us. I mean, I was there thirty years after you were in high school. But yeah, can I tell you? Can I tell you guys a quick story? Uh, a quick St. John's Prep, Austin Prep story. <laughs> so you have to understand, St. John's Prep has been around a long time, John. Correct? Yes, a long, long time. Sure. Okay. Well, when I went to Austin Prep, the school was six years old. Right. And we we played football. I played football for the high school team, and. <laughs> So our athlete, our, excuse me. Sorry to laugh. Our athletic director made the mistake of scheduling a game with St. John's Prep. Oh man! And the score was thirty-two nothing at the half. <laughs> Their JV team would have beaten our varsity by 40 points. It sad, was such an embarrassment. The sad part is your athletic director was also your quarterback. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Al, I've got, I've got a question, Al. Um, I get really irritated. I know we've spoken, spoken about this before. I get really, really uh, irritated with watching some of these guys on the Internet giving bad advice oh. to kids. Yeah. Um, uh, it's really frustrating, really frustrating. Yeah. Um, I uh, aggravates the hell out of me. I want your thoughts on that. I, you know, I, I think the, uh, the dissemination of knowledge in this hobby is a huge problem. And, uh, <laughs> now you a, can't uh, give me a hard time about somebody, somebody was, <laughs> was coming in the side door. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm really sensing a lack of focus oh, yeah. on today's show. <laughs> oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, okay. Yeah. Where, I mean, where, I'm where, I'm, where? I'm locked in right now. Uh, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> right. Let me let me qualify what happened. We have we have close friends. We have close friends that are visiting us, okay. uh -huh. and, and they just arrived. And our good friend was going to walk through the side door onto uh -huh. camera, so I had to give her like, oh, don't come out. Right. One of those deals. <laughs> So anyway, excuse me. Uh, hey, Al, uh, our friends are here. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue now. This might this might end up being a, this could end up being a Gax blast from the past, right here, brother. No, anyway, all, all kidding aside, though. No, really, these guys are aggravating the hell out of me. Yeah. It's it's a huge pet peeve of mine, yeah. and and you know, I I think. 
you know, I go bananas because there, there, there is, you know, there's actual hobby, like there are resources out there for you to learn about stuff and, and uh, not get it wrong when you're, you know, when you're going on the internet and, and making statements about, uh, you know, what makes this card special or what makes that card, what's rare and what's not. And, and, uh, you know, it's funny, there's a thread on F54 right now about, uh, you know, people getting frustrated with sellers describing cards that are not rare as rare. And, and, uh, you know, but I, I think another thing that I see a lot of is, is this investment mentality that's coming from some of the social media folks and uh and i think that in in some cases um you know it's driven by the manufacturers who are making product that costs so much damn money that uh you know how if you're a kid how are you gonna even if you know like i used to go to the gas station and buy a pack of baseball cards and and uh you know, I, what I was concerned with was, you know, hey, do I did I get Greg Nettles? Is he, you know, is he, is he in here? You know, and right. not like like which insert did I get? It was it worth the money that I spent on the pack? And uh, you know what I mean? It's just not. It's a different thing, and and uh, I don't love it. You know, so I mean, this is one guy. I, I'm not going to mention his name. I sound like a cranky old man. I do. <clears throat> I, I, honest to God, Al, it's. It's really frustrating because I have a grandson sure. that is uh, 11 years old, right? and he's a collector. And unfortunately, he listens to some of these uh, influences yeah. uh, online. And he's, he's, he's made some bad decisions. He's, he's made some bad buying decisions. I talk to him. I try to advise him. But it, the, the fact remains that it's you know that's it is what it is it is yeah, what yeah. it is yeah yeah, yeah. Al, yeah. how do you um you mentioned earlier you have i forget what it was 63 or 53 tops but you have let's say you come across a great set uh -huh. and i'm finding this with a lot of guys that do auctions and, and they're in your business how do you make that choice to keep a set together or break it up and is that a, a tough question. decision to make it, it it really is it's a it's a good question and and some of it has to do with the um with the consigner's um stomach for risk yep because if you keep it together, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of rolling the dice that the, that the all, bidder, all or nothing, high right. dollar yeah. bidders are going to be there Correct. to push that price yeah. up where, you know, but then there's this other, you know, cost of doing it question that, that, uh, you know, if you've got a, a catalog that, that has X number of pages, you only fit so many things on a page and that page has got to produce more than it, than it costs. Right. So, so, um, uh, I think what we're doing with with the 63 set that we've got, which is a really high, high end set. It's a I mean, there's nines. There, I think there's some I don't know, 100 and something nines in this. set. I mean, it's wow. an unbelievable set. Um, you know, it was an easy decision to make with with that set. Uh, we have a set builder auction coming up in the summer, which is an auction that we do that does not have a printed catalog. It's just, uh, you know, we keep it, we just keep it electronic. Uh, and that enables us to take some of those lower dollar cards from the set and put them there. So I don't have to worry about right. printing a catalog. We have the same thing. We have a whole bunch of high grade, a, a whole bunch of PSA 9, uh, 1975 tops. You know, in some cases, PSA 9, 1975 tops are five, $600 cards. In a lot of cases, they're 12 to $15 cards. And, and so, you know, this gives us the ability to do that. You know, um, you know, I I like the idea of keeping sets together just because somebody worked real hard on it. Um, but I also like the idea of providing a resource for those set builders that are, you know, trying to pick away at you know at, at these cards. A lot in a lot of cases, it's it's you know fifteen twenty bucks to grade a card now. Yeah. You know, the days of four dollar grading specials are are long gone. Right. So you know, it's it's. Uh, um, it's an opportunity for collectors to get those commons that, uh, you know, that they've been searching for that they don't want to submit themselves. Uh, so we have about a minute left. Al, when is your auction? Where'd he so, go? What, we're going to oh, assume. What happened? Was, did we lose you? Did ah, we lose there you, you are. That was weird. Oh, oh. do you see me? You I kind of liked it. I kind of <laughs> liked it. No, I could see you. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, listen, we have about 30 <laughs> seconds left now. Uh -huh. um, when does your auction end? I know it's probably going to start tomorrow night or the night after. When's right. it going to end? It's going to end on Saturday, March 30th. It's loveofthegameauctions.com. It's a, um, we're really, really proud of this one. Cool it's, auction, Al. Yeah, cool I, auction. It, I'm very and, and by the way, I'm not going to tell say what I have in there, but I have an item in there myself, and I'm very excited about it. It's the best thing in the auction. Oh, there's no doubt. There's absolutely no doubt. <laughs> I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I uh, I consigned that Babe Ruth bat to you. No yeah, problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun was going to Baltimore to the Babe Ruth Museum and picking Again, that up. Ah, that's cool. Um, yeah, they have I think the only place in the country right now where there is a Super Bowl trophy and a World Series trophy displayed together in the same place. Very and and uh, that was really neat to see. That's cool. All right. We're yeah. out of time. Al, we love you. You know what you mean to the show. You always bring humor and knowledge to the show. Great. JM, yeah, a little iffy, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Thanks. It's always a pleasure to be on, and, and hello to everybody watching. Al, awesome. we love you, brother. Take care. With that being said, we love you guys. Happy collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.